people walk out on shows, and those are very often the shows that become historical. And that, and if you told them, you know, you walked out on West Side Story in 1950. Seven. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the benchmark Broadway musicals that completely upended the art form and theater industry itself. Broadway shows. Uh, touring company. Okay, I'm eliminating Dal. When I call out your number, please form a line. Number 10, Rent. Let be among us without sin. Be the first. While based on the Puccini opera La Boheme, Rent is pitched to a modern-day audience and full of modern-day tragedy. Jonathan Larson's aim in bringing this mega-hit to the stage was to introduce musical theater to audiences who had grown up on MTV. He was someone who was as much wanting to be a part of a a musical theater tradition as he wanted to blow it up and change it and reinvent it. Rent's rock music score and themes of disaffected youth carving out communities in opposition to corporate greed and sellout artists stuck the landing with its intended audience. Rent heads were arguably the first modern day musical fandom. One song, glory. One song, before I go, glory. One song to leave behind. Fans would camp out overnight to get tickets, and as a result, the show may have single-handedly created the lottery system shows still use today. Number 9, Beauty and the Beast. The Lion King would blow the roof off of the new Amsterdam Theatre in 1997, but three years before, Disney Theatrical Productions would have its first success with this show. Adapted from the 1991 animated feature, Beauty and the Beast proved that the Disney brand had legs on Broadway. No, no, not the kick legs! Oh, 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 you they kept the creative team mostly in-house, so the company could maintain creative control over the production. Broadway critics gave it a mixed reaction, but the audiences came out in droves. Everyone's awed and inspired by you, and it's not very hard to see why. It played for 13 years, closing only to make way for Disney's 2007 production of The Little Mermaid musical in the same theater. Number 8, Company. Composer and lyricist Stephen Sondheim constantly pushed the boundaries of the musical theater. The company does deal with upper middle class people with upper middle class problems. Broadway theater has been for many years supported by those people. They really want to escape and uh, here we're saying bring it right back in their faces. Company wasn't even supposed to be a musical. Book writer George Firth had originally envisioned it as 11 loosely connected plays about marriage and relationships. Listen, everybody, look, I don't know what you're waiting for. A wedding? What's a wedding? It's a prehistoric ritual where everybody promises fidelity forever, which is maybe the most horrifying word I've ever heard, and which is followed by a honeymoon where suddenly he'll realize he's saddled with a nut and want to kill me, which he should. Thanks a bunch, but I'm not getting married. Once Sondheim got involved, they were suddenly exploring a new frontier in the form. While Company isn't the first concept musical, its focus on contemporary relationships and its use of songs more to develop its themes than further its plot was novel. Someone to crowd you with love, someone to force you to care, someone to make you come through. Its innovative structure and representational staging has also made it ripe for reinterpretation throughout the years, with each new adaptation highlighting a different facet of its message. Number 7, Showboat. Don't you know this show is going to be? Hey, just you think love you. Premiering at the storied Ziegfeld Theater in 1927, composer Jerome Kern and lyricist librettist Oscar Hammerstein II brought Showboat into the world. Based on Edna Ferber's popular novel, Showboat was a revelation. The history of the American musical theater is divided quite simply into two eras, everything before Showboat and everything after Showboat. 
before Showboat, Broadway was a place for sumptuous but light spectacle. Musical comedies and vaudeville acts weren't as interested in telling narrative stories with real human emotion or social relevance. Despite its innovations in the form, the show has been a lightning rod for controversy due to the treatment of its African-American characters. Nonetheless, it paved the way for the theater-going audience's desire for musicals that had a heftier story to tell. Suddenly, the musical could say something with an integrity that it hadn't quite said before. Thanks to Kern, thanks to Hammerstein, thanks to the performers, but mostly thanks to Siegfeld. Number six, Cabaret. Welcome and bienvenue, welcome. Im cabaret, en cabaret, du cabaret. Developed from writer Christopher Isherwood's autobiographical novel, the story of a writer and a second-rate cabaret singer living in Weimar-era Berlin was unlike anything on Broadway before it. Cabaret is a buffet of styles. Blending commentary numbers with plot-advancing songs, the musical often volleys between two different settings, forcing audiences to acclimate to its structure. There were two musicals on stage. One took place in real rooms and one took place in limbo. And in limbo, were these numbers which indirectly commented on the real book upstage. Its experimental style and themes of hedonism and fascism have also left it open for reinterpretation, which often leads to fans arguing over whose version is best. You want to start an argument between musical theater fans? Ask if Sally Bowles is supposed to be a good singer. It's got Number 5, West Side Story. Star-crossed lovers and warring gangs already provide material for drama. Add in all that beautiful dancing and a sensational score and you have a lasting piece of Broadway history. Director-choreographer Jerome Robbins' background in ballet heavily informed his approach to this Romeo and Juliet adaptation. I read it and I said, what the hell would I do to try to make this alive? And I thought, well, what if I made it today? How would I feel about it? And that was it. While many musical comedies before it utilized dancing, West Side Story integrated beautiful movement into its story in ways that felt classical and new all at once. Unlike many other shows, where an anonymous chorus of dancers would do a lot of the heavy lifting, the show's entire cast had to be able to pull off the high-level choreography. Number four, hair. Give me down the fair hair, shoulder length longer. Here, baby, there, mama, everywhere, daddy, daddy, hair. In the late 1960s, the brewing counterculture didn't exactly lend itself to the Broadway stage. Anti-Vietnam War protests and civil rights struggles didn't exactly make people want to forget their troubles and get happy so much as scream and shout. Hair laid bare the basic hippie ethos and presented it on stage in all its liberal, vulgar, and sexual excesses. Since the dawning of the age of Aquarius, the age Its songs entered the culture via acts like The Fifth Dimension, but the show became dogged by accusations of profanity and so-called anti-American sentiment. Its communal spirit deeply affected audiences, with some productions welcoming the audience on stage to dance with the cast. The national tour faced legal injunctions and threats of violence. Rarely has a Broadway show been such a volatile cultural flashpoint. Number three, Hamilton. Um, we start rehearsals for Hamilton, and then that becomes whatever it becomes. Lin-Manuel Miranda had already wowed Broadway with 2008's In the Heights, one of the first successful hip-hop musicals. His follow-up took nearly seven years to arrive, but it was well worth the wait. 
This hip-hop musical about Alexander Hamilton features rapping founding fathers and modern political sentiments. And I've been reading and writing, we need to handle our financial situation. Are we a nation of states? What's the state of our nation? The past patiently waiting the passionate, smashing every expectation, every action, the act of creation. I'm laughing at the face of casualties and sorrow. For the first time I'm thinking past tomorrow. Far-reaching press attention and fan engagement made it one of modern Broadway's biggest successes, and its diverse cast made us ask deeper questions about traditional casting practices. Its effect on politics and pop culture was a brief return to a time when Broadway songs could penetrate mainstream culture. Hamilton's impact will be studied for years to come. Number 2. Evita The Beatles started the first British invasion. Andrew Lloyd Webber may have started the second. Though he had some success on Broadway with Jesus Christ Superstar, his 1979 musical Evita was a barn burner. The Patti LuPone-led production jumped from London to New York with relatively few changes and became the first British musical to win Best Musical at the Tonys. It also set the precedent for spectacle-driven British mega-musicals that would dominate Broadway for the rest of the decade. Without the success of Evita, there might have been no Cats, Phantom, or Les Miserables, and given how long those musicals stayed on Broadway, the British musical explosion also made producers reevaluate just how long an original Broadway run could last. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Oklahoma This classic show was a trailblazer that launched one of the most enduring and influential partnerships in Broadway history. This first collaboration between Richard Rodgers and Oscar Hammerstein II was a complete reinvention of the art form. Building on Hammerstein's previous contributions with Showboat, the pair wrote what is essentially seen as the first musical to completely integrate its music with a show's plot. While this seems like a no-brainer now, that isn't necessarily what people expected from musicals before 1943. Never to violate or corrupt the basic intent. The style may be stretched, elaborated, made more broad for effect. But the meaning of the dance must not be altered. Essentially, we have Oklahoma to thank for decades of great stories on Broadway. I got a beautiful feeling and rhythms going my way. What show do you think changed Broadway forever? Let us know in the comments. When you live through history, you don't know it's history. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.